So our time in LA, the first leg on our Lost and Hungry tour, is coming to an end. So to celebrate, we've cooked up some incredible recipes that have been inspired by the food and the phenomenal people we've met while we've been in the city. Right, let's get a drink. So elegantly done. Oh, oh, well done. Beautiful. Now this was one of my favourite evenings so far, for very good reason. We went to explore the microbrewery scene down in Torrance in South LA, uh, and we found a couple of breweries that actually open up the brewery as a bar on certain evenings of the week. And there's this incredible scene of people just drinking and having a great time. You are having an east west. East west, what's that? That is. Pork with kimchi on top. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Love it. Thank you so much. Great choice. So what beer would you best recommend? I've got the burnt end. A big one. A cold one. This is the best part is you come, you drink some good beer, you eat some good food, locals hang out, you cry a little bit from the heat. I mean, this is what it's all about. This is why we made it. So we're having to say goodbye to Absolution and to Barley Hogs Grill. Um, we're pretty gutted about it because the beer's been great, the food's been great, so why are we going? Thank you. It's been amazing. Oh, if only we had another microphone. Good work. Good work. So we brew only Belgian style beers. You can look up there, you can see a sign that says no MSG, no IPA. We don't brew IPAs. Or, that's all we brew, Belgian style beers. It tastes Moroccan. It's got pistachio and vanilla bean in it. Back here, these are all wine barrels. And so we take finished beer, we send it into these uh, barrels. We have different sizes of barrels here. And then uh, we add bacteria and wild yeast and trying to get it to uh, sour. So it uh, tends to be very earthy. Uh, the strains that we use has a lot of um, a lot of tropical fruits coming through, but then there's like an earthy funkiness, kind of like a little toe jammy, barnyardy. So do you have a favorite beer? Well, I don't have a favorite book. I don't have a favorite film. I don't have... Uh, for me, my favorite beer is the next one I'm going to brew, the next book, the next meal. It's always an adventure for me. Belgians believe that beer is a digestive, it's a food. So um, it has to go with food. So for us, food is very important. So you want a shot of this beautiful, beautiful dough first? That's just like a pillow. So making this pizza, you only touch the center. You don't want to touch the edge. A lot of people that make pizza at home, they roll it. Yeah. You're pushing all the air out. And then I give it one of these. Takes the flour off the edge. And then this is the true Naples style. You walk into a pizzeria, you know the guy learned in Naples because they pick it up and throw it on their hand like this. Cross your arm, down. That's very, very good. A little sauce, a little San Marzano. Just, uh, we crush it by hand, San Marzano tomato. Basil, salt, that's it. Keep it simple. All right, that's it. This dough, I'll let it cook in 30, 40 seconds. Joe, thank you. Good job, man. Give us a verdict on his pizza then. <laughs> it's very good. You have the touch, you have the fingers. You know what, it's all about the dough, because that was so, I've worked with dough before, and it's just all over the place. That. It's a pleasure to work with. And talking about great food that should be served with great beer. Ricky's fish tacos. Oh, oh no, no, they were spectacular. Yes. And how do yours compare? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 I love how you put me on the pedestal. What basically, I think they compare pretty well because Ricky gave us all his secrets. Why are tacos so popular in LA, in your opinion? There's always been tacos in LA because of the uh, Mexican culture. Tacos are the easiest uh, way to express Mexican food. 
So what, what's, the, what's the secret for you that makes the perfect taco? You know, keep it simple. Every good taco has to have a good salsa, you know. The fish taco means a lot to me because that's a typical dish in my hometown, in Baja. I just had to really go into, into the ingredients and getting most of them from Mexico and adapting uh, the catfish, you know, to instead of, instead of uh, angel shark we use in Baja. I read somewhere that you used to be a florist. Yes. How, how did you go from that to this? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I remember the first day I went, wow, $25 profit. <laughs> I said, this is cool. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's how I started, from nothing, you know. Well, one last favor. Yes. yes. Can I please sit in the truck? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, come here for a sec. Get a load of that. That is an epic taco. Mate, you gotta have this, come on. Yeah. That is great, isn't it? Now, Ricky admitted that beer is a great thing to wash down tacos, mm. but everywhere we went, including Tacos Pour Vivor and several other places, we tried various different Agua Fresca. So I've made one. What's in it, mate? Uh, Agua Fresca is basically a sugar syrup with fruit and whatever you like. This particular one has cucumber, apple, mint and lime juice. It tastes incredible and it reminds me quite a bit of a lot of the juices and smoothies mm. we've been having in California. Another massive trend. You can't really go anywhere without an amazing juice bar. Now can we talk about one of my favourite meals that we've had in LA? Can we make it our favourite? Let's do that. Korean barbecue. So when we were in the restaurant, we met Dan, who mm. talked us through every dish and told us all about the different puncher. And this was his favorite, the beef, garlic, salt, pepper, as simple as that, quickly cooked, and just dipped in the seasoning, which is sesame oil, salt and pepper. And what's great about it is right in the center of the table, you've got the barbecue. So it epitomizes what sort it is. It's social food. Everyone's sitting around, digging in, making food personal, and cooking it themselves. <laughs> We were quite surprised to hear that Korean barbecue, Korean food was so popular in LA. It's not something we would have associated from London looking across. What do you think makes Korean barbecue so popular? I think largely it has to do with the number of people that we have that's Korean uh, ancestry. Um, here we have a million, one million uh, roughly uh, Koreans in the state of California alone. So uh, there's a lot of Korean restaurants. Uh, they're competing for the same thing, so it makes Korean food more authentic and all the better. Um, so this is the best Korean food you can have outside of Korea. I know there's a ton of dishes here, but what makes like the best Korean barbecue here? Definitely it's in the sauce. Um, that's what makes all the difference. Um, and the quality of the meat. There's more! So here we have the... Uh, Soju bomb specialist, this is Gunny. Yeah, he's, gonna 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 he's, gonna he's gonna show us how it's done. So I'm pushing this glass a bit. Pushing this, this glass, drop yeah. it on the floor. Okay. Oh. <coughs> it's a domino effect. <laughs> James, what did we do? You've made so much mess. Alright, get away. Come yeah, in. Come on. Cheers. We We've had our minds blown by the food oh, in LA. Mm -hmm. And this is only the first leg of our Lost and Hungry mm -hmm. tour. If the food's gonna be like this for the rest of the tour, then I wanna get a lot more lost. <laughs> well, and also, I'm still <laughs> hungry. Well, so. you're always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> to the second leg? To the second to leg. The second leg. Cheers. 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 Cheers.